All right. Hola, amigos. Hola. This is not a super happy video, obviously, given the title. Um, we are here in Baja still. If you saw our last video, you know why. But we wanted to give you guys an update because since we shot that last video, obviously the coronavirus has blown up, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. We've been really following the news since it was, um, you know, first, you know, kind of an issue in China. We've been watching it. And it's a particular issue to us as travelers, obviously. What are we going to do? Are we going to stay here? Are we going to go home? This has been something that we've been discussing, I would say, almost constantly mm -hmm. for a while now. Um, and we're definitely not the only ones traveling down here in Baja who are having to make these decisions. Yeah, we come across a lot of people that are also having to make these decisions and a lot of them are, you know, rushing uh, at the last minute to go back to the state. But well, let's start with, okay, so the day we're recording this, it is March 17th. And the news in the States is basically that everything is being shut down. Schools, bars, restaurants, you know, businesses, everything's being shut down. And, um, you know, that, so the first thing people want to know is if we're rushing back to the States, right? Yeah. And some of our concerns was rushing back to the States. Um, our number one, you know, if they're recommending people not to travel unnecessarily, is it smart for us to come all the way from the southern tip of Baja into the States? You know, is that smart? Number two, where the heck in the States do we go? We don't have a home base anymore. You know, if we wanted to go to my mom's, that's not super safe. She's in her 80s. You know, we're not going to travel across the country and show up at her door and be like, hi, we're here with the coronavirus. Hopefully not. But you know what I'm saying? We'll have so to quarantine just, ourselves. Yeah, we'd have to quarantine ourselves. So just where would we go? And is it even smart to be moving around and driving around at this point? That's that's concern number one. Concern number two is, unfortunately, we don't have health insurance in the States anymore. That is just... Um, we're looking for the dog. Hold on. <laughs> oh, she's right there. Okay. Um, we don't have health insurance in the States because we had no intention of returning to the States. We did tell you guys in our last video that we're, we were planning to come back and our plan was to buy short-term insurance. Um, unfortunately, that insurance isn't going to cover coronavirus testing and treatment. So if we come back to the States where right now coronavirus is way more prevalent than it is in Mexico, then we're stuck with how do we pay for treatment if we do get sick. So that's that's something to consider. Um, Where our health insurance here that we have is covering yes. everything. Our, our travel insurance, we have really, really good travel insurance um, with a very high limit for medical. It's our primary medical. And we did check with them that we are covered for coronavirus testing and treatment in Mexico. Our insurance does cover to evacuate us to our home country but again, once we get there, um, you know, we don't have coverage there. It is something to consider, right? So it's kind of a, it's an awful feeling to feel like, okay, do we want to, do we want to stay here in Mexico and perhaps not have access to as good of medical care, but know that we're not, you know, that we're going to have financial coverage for this or do we want to go back to the states where we won't have financial coverage but maybe maybe better medical care and that's a maybe because the articles that we're reading are talking about ventilator shortages and the healthcare system being overwhelmed and you know we're just not sure unfortunately yeah. you know a lot of people are thinking oh if you're young and you're healthy it's not a big deal um for for us uh i have lung issues um I had a collapsed lung and I get pneumonia frequently. So I definitely, you know, want to try to stay healthy. And so, you know, a hospital with access to a ventilator is something that I have been thinking about. Mm. We've had a lot of discussions on is the, you know, is it, oh, this is so hard. If this seems awkward, I promise you, it seems no less awkward when we're not on camera. It's just an, it's just an awkward conversation. We just yeah. keep having to talk about all these what ifs, what if, what if. And I'm not comfortable with any decision. I'm not comfortable going back to the States. I'm not comfortable staying here. There's no 
option that makes me completely comfortable. Where I feel that staying put, staying here, we are not 100% sheltered from coronavirus for sure, but we are now in almost the off season. So, and a lot of people already left to go back in the state a or Canada. A lot of Canada. people are fleeing, honestly. Like in the last couple of days, people have just packed up and, and bolted for the border. Yeah, so, and it's good, gonna get warmer and warmer here. So I think staying here is probably the right decision for us because as people are leaving, we're basically gonna quarantine ourselves here. I mean, so um, like we've been camping in the Arroyo, which is, is free. And, you know, we've been doing a lot of activities, which we have now stopped doing. We're not going to pickleball. We're not going to open mic. We're not socializing nearly as much. Like we are practicing social distancing, as they call it, as much as we can. I do think that we have the option to, to isolate ourselves here more than at home and sure. still have access. Like we could go to the States and we could boondock out in the rocks in Sedona and never see another person, right? But we wouldn't have access to water. We would have to keep leaving to get water. That's the one thing. Whereas here, we can, we feel like we can almost isolate ourselves and still have access to water. Because what we've done is, and this is gonna sound strange, we've moved from the free Arroyo, where we would have to leave several times a week to go to a water purification station, which means you're interacting with multiple people and all of that. Um, we've moved from the Arroyo to a campground. And that's gonna sound strange that that's where we've chosen to move to. But the reason that we've done that is because like Greg was saying, it's emptying out around here. There's almost no one in this campground. I'm gonna show you, um, I'll take the camera around and show you. This campground is almost empty. And we have a friend that we are going to split a lot with, the three of us. The three of us have agreed to all practice social distancing, no longer go to pickleball and do all the things and basically quarantine the three of us together on a lot, not parked by anyone else, but we have access to water. We have access to electricity because it is getting warmer and we can plug in our air conditioning. Um, and the water also makes it better because we're able to clean things better when we're not restricting our water. That's right. You know, I mean, when you're in the Arroyo and you're camping and you're, you're conserving water, you're not, you're just not able to be as clean as you would like to be. So, you know, we feel like this is the best option for us right now. Um, I, <laughs> I still don't feel comfortable. I mean, I, I wouldn't say I feel comfortable. Do you? I mean, I do feel comfortable with our decision. I do. I don't, but again, I don't think I'd feel comfortable going home either. You know, I also think... we hear about like that in the States, it's like an apocalypse with like no toilet paper. And no, no food. And I'm going to go to the store here in a minute because I have to get a prescription, not a coronavirus prescription, just a regular one. And I'll take you through the store because it's connected to the pharmacy. And I'll show you we still have toilet paper and all the food. And so I don't, if we go home, like, do we have to stock up on toilet paper in Mexico before we go to the States? Like, that sounds crazy. That sounds ridiculous. But that's, I mean, we've talked to our friends at home and it's apparently as a bad or not as bad or worse than the news is saying. Right. So, yeah. So, but it's still, it's still a question of if we get sick and, and me, especially with my lung issues, will we have access to decent or good enough medical care here? And we've been told that there is some good hospitals around here. We have been so. given like the lowdown on where to go if we get sick. Um, and there, you know, there are a lot of Americans who, and Canadians who live here year round, and this is their source of primary medical care and they're very happy with it. We just haven't had a need to use the Mexican healthcare system yet, right? So we just don't know. And I think that not knowing is freaking me out a little bit. Mm -hmm. You're not freaked out at all. No. So weird. I don't know. So we're staying for the foreseeable future, um, which obviously puts the, the video that we just put out on hold, you know, coming back to build a new rig because we don't know what the heck we're doing now with this coronavirus stuff. Yeah. We just want to stay as safe and as healthy as possible. Keeping people around us safe. Yes. And, yeah. and it, I mean, it did work out kind of nice that we have a friend here, Anthony, who's he's here by himself. And, you know, the three of us have agreed and he was already planning on staying. Yeah. But the three of us have agreed to social distancing and basically quarantine the three of us together. I am sad to not be playing pickleball. <laughs> But, you know, this is the price you pay, right? And so that's 
the update for today, guys. That's coronavirus update number one. Oh, I know what I was going to say. So just to kind of give you guys a little update on Mexico, Mexico has very, very few confirmed coronavirus cases right now. I stress the word confirmed because testing is not super widespread here in Mexico. Of course, it's not super widespread in the States from what we read. But I, I think that there are more coronavirus cases here that we don't know about. But it's not widespread as far as confirmed cases. And there is no panic. No wow. one is buying up anything. Um, like a month ago, we were at Costco okay, I, yeah, and to there was toilet you. paper. What? There is no panic on the Mexican population. Yes. The yeah. American okay, yeah. and Canadian that are here in Mexico are all panicking. No, not all. Not all. Most. No, most of them are leaving, right? Some of, of some of them are leaving, but some people are considering staying longer, like us. But yes, I would say the, it's majority, not the majority. Yeah, the majority of Canadians and Americans are bolting for the border. And I just I think that's a lot of a lot of travel and a lot of you know interaction with people. I mean, even if you have an RV, you're stopping to get gas. You're, I, I don't know. I don't think. And they recommend not to travel if you don't have yep. to. And so, yeah. So we're gonna sit it out, right? That's right. Um, I mean, there are worse places to isolate yourself and sit it out, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm going to take you guys to the store, show you what it's like in Mexico currently here in the middle of March. Going to show you our campground and how empty it is and, you know, our spot all by itself. And yeah, we will uh, we'll keep you guys updated. We do have some more videos to post for you, which are going to be completely out of order. And we apologize for that. But yeah, that's it. And anything else? I don't know. Stay safe. Yeah, we, you know, we're thinking about everyone and we hope everyone stays safe and follows the, you know, the recommended guidelines for wherever they're at. We're also, you know, thinking about our friends. We have friends who are stuck in Europe right now trying to get back. And so, mm -hmm. you know, this is just crazy for everyone. And, you know, we're just going to do what we think is best for now. And that might change in a month or a week or a day. We don't know. We shall see. We shall see. For now, I'm going to show you our campground and show you the grocery stores, show you what it's like here in Mexico during the coronavirus pandemic. <laughs> So we're here at Chapitos, which is the largest market in Los Barriles. And luckily, like I said, there is a pharmacy attached here. So I can show you guys the food situation in addition to the pharmacy. All right, so bread. Bread is always a little bit picked over. It's not a super hot commodity, but there is still bread. And there is still lots and lots and lots of cookies. <laughs> There's also a um, good amount of cereal still left. The so bread, cereal, all that still here. Let's see what we've got over here. So you can see shelves are not bare. Canned food still in stock. Hot dogs. All this the stock looks pretty much normal. Meat, cleaning products, bleach. Uh, bleach is looking a little bit picked over on the bottom there. And yeah, here's the toilet paper. Tons and tons and tons of toilet paper. We have no panic buying here in Mexico and I honestly hope it stays that way. No one needs to be hoarding toilet paper. That's ridiculous. Eggs. We actually did our shopping yesterday. So I think eggs are pretty much all I need. A little bit picked over, but not bad. There's still rice and there's still plenty of dry beans, which is the way most beans are sold here. You can get them in cans, but it's just not super common. All right, that's Anthony's quad that I took to the grocery store. I'm going to show you our campsite and I'm going to show you surroundings so you can see how isolated we are, relatively speaking. Uh, this is Anthony's toy hauler. 
There's Greg. This is how we have our campers set up, the two of us. It's a little bit of a mess right now, but yeah. There's foster baby Tanya, chewing on a stick. There's Greg. Hi, Greg. Hi. And over here is Anthony's dog, Rizzy. Anthony is at the store doing the last of his shopping. Now that he's shopping and I have my prescription, we should not need to leave here at least two weeks. We're good, maybe even a little bit more. So I'm gonna walk you guys around and just show you how isolated we are. So there's a camper right there that is packing up and leaving in the next few days. All these spots, empty, 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 empty. There's one guy's truck parked there. I have no idea where he is. All these spots here next to us are empty. Those big campers up front are packing and leaving, so those are gonna be empty. But directly next to us, empty. Two spots on the other side, empty. There's a permanent um, Casita RV here. Our friends are actually staying there. They are leaving in two weeks. In the row in front of us, you can see a camper right there. The camper is actually empty. Some people do leave their campers here year round, even though they're not here. And so, like I said, this guy is packing up and leaving and all of the spots, the next spots are empty. Everything is empty. Down on the other side of the park are campers that people leave here year round and no one is in them. So yeah, it is just, it's a ghost town and that's a good thing because that means that we are gonna be here pretty much by ourselves. This is the time of year that people leave anyways. It's gonna get too hot down here for most people. So yeah, this is uh, where we're gonna isolate ourselves. All right, and yeah, now we're back to camp. And that's it. Greg, anything you want to say to close out our uh, first ever coronavirus update video? Wash your hands. Wash your hands. I'm going to go wash my hands right now. Bye, guys. See you <laughs> Bye.